look at all those scratches on top of this poor Z5500 sub from stacking subs on top of subs as I've stored them and whatnot. But if it wasn't scratches from other subs, it would have been scratches from being used as a footrest. Because this, the Logitech Z5500, is a very good example of a college kid sub. Because this is the sort of thing you'd have in your dorm room when you wanted a lot of bass, and you would use it as a footrest-foot massager, depending on what you were listening to back in the day. So, I fired it up today to make sure that it still works, and it still works perfectly. Hey, the control module even still works if I want to use it in a 5.1 setup. The issue here is that I really don't have any use for this thing. If I put it under the desk, that's going to be a huge magnet, and then where do we put the computers? So I'm trying to find some use for this. One of the ideas I've tossed around is buying one of the bypass cables that makes the proprietary command module no longer necessary. You just find out what generation Z5500 these are, and then you get all of your channels except for the center channel, which actually requires a subwoofer modification in order for that to start working again. But I'm not interested in having this power an entire system. I'm actually thinking about what if we modified this to basically be a 188 watt powered subwoofer. So, and then hook it up with a smart plug and voice control so I can turn it on and off via voice commands and basically have a voice controlled powered subwoofer in my system. Sounds like a nice idea, except for the unfortunate fact that this thing was made for college kids wanting boomy bass in their video games, so not so much for music, could work sort of for movies, but this thing unfortunately in its amp has a subsonic filter, which is, which I've recently found out, is the reason why even though it's a 10 inch speaker, it doesn't go as low as the dual 8s in that clipsch box that I have rewired as passive, so I'm trying to find some way to move forward with this thing and put it to use again, or I could sell it or something like that. But I think its best role would be as some kind of powered sub. As, a, as an actual system, the crossover would be way too high. The crossover on this thing is actually 150 hertz, which is far too high for a subwoofer. That's when the bass starts getting directional, and you can tell where the bass is coming from. If anything, this should receive signal from something that's already been crossovered out, so it can function like a proper sub and stay in the non-directional frequencies. So, trying to figure out what to do with this thing has been a real head-scratcher today, but at least it still works. I could theoretically wire it in right now, except it wouldn't go as deep as the box I'm using right now. It would be louder and boomier, but it wouldn't be as deep. So, it's all Logitech stuff. I mean, Logitech in the heydays of their Klipsch Killer days was marketing stuff for people that didn't want to spend as much money as folks who had better equipment like Klipsch Pro Media or real sound system instead of this computer stuff. So the modders and the folks who've tried to jailbreak these things have been very, very busy with these, trying to make them a lot more useful than they originally were, like bypassing the subsonic filter so that 10-inch can actually make some serious, do some serious thumping and stuff. Subsonics, though, aren't there for nothing. Subsonics are there to prevent damage to the speaker, and from what I've seen, if this blows, it's really hard to get the grill in the front off in order to get at the sub without bringing in some pretty serious tools. So, uh, yeah, it's, I don't know at this point. I, I may just want to use it as a powered sub, have it one and done, and then move on to a better box later on. Maybe get a bypass cable and stuff like that. While we're here, let's take a look on the amp plate so I can get it on video, what the generation is of this thing. So if I want to go shopping for a bypass cable, I'll know what to get. Cool, this thing's still looking nice as always with its gigantic heatsink. R938, so it's a late model, post 636, so the only bypass cable that I can get for this is the rather simple one that's not going to cover all the channels anyways. So, yeah, keep the control pod around because it still works, but also get a bypass cable and maybe pursue the whole, the whole passive or active subwoofer thing. Powered sub, excuse me. <laughs> so, yeah, definitely going to check that out. And I think that's the best future for these things because, of course, the control pod is what makes it proprietary. And even with the bypass cables, sometimes people only get stereo out of them or something like that. I just want to get the subwoofer out. And actually, I wouldn't even mind modifying the amp so that only the subwoofer part still worked if it's like that. Never taken this apart before, so I don't know. It'd be cool if we could cut the power consumption by turning off the other channels except for uh, sub LFE. 
I don't know if that's even possible with this amp, and I don't really want to tinker with something that still works perfectly fine, especially when I'm talking about voice controlling it via you know, smart plugs. So we'll check that out at some point later on. For now, it's definitely a curiosity of mine. So we'll do more with this thing later, maybe, if I can get around the fact that it's not as refined as the Klipsch box I'm using as a sub right now. But we'll figure it out. Multimedia J out. Mm -hmm.